Hey guys, it's Brett here with the Tuning School, and this Tech Tuesday we're going to talk about how to tell when you've exceeded your mass airflow sensor. So before we jump into dissecting how to tell if you're out of mass airflow sensor or MAF, we kind of have to explain how the mass airflow sensor works. Now, the way it works is it measures the air that's coming into the engine, and by measuring that air, the ECM knows exactly how much fuel to put into the cylinders for combustion. Now, the way it measures this air is via a hot wire. The sensor has a hot wire that sits in the airstream, and the ECM sends a constant voltage to that wire. Now, it tries to keep it the same temperature the entire time. And so what's gonna happen is, as more airflow flows across that wire, the ECM has gotta send more voltage to the wire to keep it the constant temperature. So in doing that, it's able to calculate how much airflow is really, really there. Now, let's say that you have a car that makes a lot of boost and it flows a lot of airflow across that hot wire. What's gonna eventually happen is the ECM can only send so much voltage to that wire and it only can read so much airflow. At some point, it's gonna stop being able to read the airflow and so no matter how much more airflow you send across the wire, it's not gonna to know to put any more fuel into the cylinders. What's gonna happen is at wide open throttle, your air fuel ratio is gonna to start to drift lean. And there's a couple of different ways given what car you have to tell if your car has exceeded MAF, and we're gonna jump into that into a scan file and a tune file right now. The first thing that we're gonna do is we have to determine a couple of values inside our tune file before we can really move into our scan file. So the example that we're gonna to use today is our 98 Trans Am that we have here at the shop. Uh, it's a rear-mounted STS turbo system, and it easily exceeds the MAF when we put about 10 pounds of boost on it um, with the mass, being, the mass airflow sensor um, being in a stock configuration. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open the engine tab up here. We're gonna to go to airflow, and then we're gonna to wanna to be under the general tab. And we're gonna click the airflow versus frequency table. So it's gonna open up. The first thing that we're gonna to want to determine is what is the top end of this table going to read? What is the maximum amount of mass airflow frequency hertz, which are these white numbers up here? What's the maximum number that it can read? So if you move all the way to our right, we will see that the maximum number it can read is 12,000 hertz. So this is gonna help us when we go to the tune file, we'll know if we see anything over 12,000 hertz that we're not gonna be able to read any more airflow above that and it won't be able to make calculations. Now, the other thing that we wanna look at is the actual values that are within the table because it's possible that we can actually max out this value inside the table before we max out the frequency. And by that I mean if you come down here, hover over this airflow versus frequency table, you can see in the bottom right hand corner here it says 0 to 68 pounds a minute. So that means if we exceed 68 pounds a minute in here, it won't be able to actually command any more fuel. Uh, it's going to be seeing the maximum amount of airflow that it can. So these are the two things we want to look for. Uh, are we seeing more than 68 pounds a minute of airflow? And are we seeing 12,000 hertz? Um, one thing that we want to make a point of really quickly is just make sure what this top value is up here as well, the 66.4. Just kind of remember what the top value of your table is as we move forward, um, and then that'll help you in the long run as well. So now that we have determined these values, let's go to the scanner. This is a run of it's actually at the drag strip. And you can see from the throttle position, we start about right here, uh, and it, we actually let out of the pedal a little bit, probably just to try and stop spinning or something along those lines. And we really got into it about here. So you can see when we got into about here, we are already at 10,000 hertz, and we're already seeing 42 pounds an hour. And it's, those are represented by the hertz of the red line and the pounds a minute, excuse me, not now, the pounds a minute are the blue line. So if we scroll to the right, we'll see that it's rising, it's rising, it's rising. And right here, we hit 12,000 hertz, okay? So we're already exceeded what the math is gonna be able to see. But if we keep going to the right, you'll see that it even goes higher than that. We get up as high as 13,000 hertz, 13,800 hertz. So we are 1,800 hertz above what we'd actually be able to read. And you can see here that the mass airflow uh, pounds a minute number is 66.4. Now that's 66.4 and you can see it flatlines up here. It flatlines because that last value in the table was 66.4. So as soon as we exceed it, it doesn't know to put any more uh, it doesn't know that any more airflow is there and to put any more fuel because that was the last value. It carries that last value once you've exceeded that top number in the table. It just carries it out throughout. And the problem you're going to find here is we don't actually have a wideband hooked up, but if you look here at these injector milliseconds, 
bank one and bank two, this is an example of how open the injectors are. And you can see once we hit about 12,000 hertz, they start to slowly close and go down. What this means is the injectors are actually opening for less amount of time. So they're actually physically injecting less fuel because it doesn't know that more airflow is present. So it's kind of just guessing at this point. It doesn't really know what's going on. It knows it hit the top end, but we're building boost all this while and we're flowing more air and more air and more air, creating a dangerous condition in the motor because the computer doesn't know that there's more air. So these are some simple ways that you'll be able to tell if you've exceeded your mass airflow sensor. So let's say that you've got a car that's out of mass airflow sensor. You have a couple options at your disposal that you can do to achieve more mass airflow sensor. So one of the things you can do is you can increase the diameter of the pipe that the mass airflow sensor is in. And by doing this, you're going to decrease air velocity, which will help the mass sensor read a little bit more. Now, this usually isn't the greatest of solutions because it's hard to get a bigger pipe in there. There's a lot of fitment issues involved and you really only get like a little bit more if that. Now, something else you can do is you can upgrade your mass airflow sensor. A lot of times there's better OEM options for mass airflow sensors on newer cars that you can install on your older car that's going to be able to read a higher airflow reading. Um, then there's also something called tune scaling. And then lastly, there's what's called speed density tuning, which is not using the mass airflow sensor at all anymore and using the map sensor to tune the car. In an upcoming Tech Tuesday video, we're going to jump into and explain better what exactly speed density tuning is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about any of the content we covered here today, then feel free to contact us at 727-264-8875. Keep a lookout for the upcoming Tech Tuesday video on speed density tuning. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.